I'm Lisa Osler. I'm the one who built your dollhouse kit here. So I just wanted to give a little introduction and explain why the house is built the way it is. So until about 1870 in the Red River settlement, Métis were building log houses using what's called the Red River frame. So there would be a vertical post and it would have grooves cut into the, into the sides of it. And these horizontal logs would have a tenon cut into the end of it. So there'd just be a cut that would make it fit into the groove. Um, so it'd be attached to the corner like that and the logs would stack up in the groove like that. And that was, uh, it was called the Red River Frame. It didn't originate in the Red River Settlement, but it just came to be called that because it was so common there. Uh, that technology came to the Red River Settlement from uh, white French settlers from Quebec. Actually, the church and rectory in Batash are built that way. They were built in, I think, 1884 by a Quebec builder named Ludger Garrow. And so that was actually more a reflection of how Quebec builders were building at that time more than how Métis and Saskatchewan were building them at that time. So I'll get to that later. So in the late 18th century in Eastern Canada, um, United Empire Loyalists who were fleeing the American Revolution uh, started moving to Eastern Canada and they brought this Georgian style of log house with them. Uh, it had a, this kind of symmetrical facade and dovetailed, cor dovetailed corners. So a dovetail joint is just kind of an angled cut and the ends of the logs that make them fit together. Uh, so the so that style of house became popular in Eastern Canada by the early 19th century. And when immigrants from Eastern Canada started moving to the Red River settlement, they brought that style of house with them. And that style of house became popular with the uh, Métis there. So when the Métis w moved west, they brought that style of house with them. So the predominant style of house built by Métis in Saskatchewan uh, was this side gable, dovetailed cornered log house with a symmetrical facade and a door on the long wall. It was also common to have an addition either on the side or on the back. Like the, the Karen house in Batash is built like that. It's this kind of house with a, it has like that kitchen addition on the back. Uh, and then it also has like the veranda in the front and it has plastered walls. Some houses had plaster on them and some didn't. Some had like a clapboard, like a, kind of a wood, wooden siding, like, a, like what's on the rectory and church in Batash. There was a similar style of log house that was common in Duck Lake, where it was like a front gable house. So the house would be like this and the door would be on this side of it. And this would be kind of the front of it and that would be facing the, the road in the town. So European settler houses that were built in this style uh, typically would have a staircase in the center that would divide the main floor in half and then those halves might be further divided so there might be like two to four rooms in the main floor. Uh, in the Métis house typically the staircase would be in a corner that would leave the main floor open and that was uh, sort of reflective of the more communal and egalitarian nature of Métis culture. So this would be more like a communal, multi-use space. And typically they were this kind of setup, like a main floor plus attic sleeping area. So the dollhouses that we're making from the kits here, uh, I made them to be like a sort of a simplified version of this house. So it's overall that style of house, but because Dovetails are kind of a lot of work to cut. I didn't have time to cut dovetail corners on 20 houses. And it's also harder to assemble if you don't have proper clamps and things like that. And so I sort of made it to look like the Red River frame, but in the overall style, like this house. So if you look at the gable, typically there would have been a window up there. Like obviously if there's a room up there, they needed light up there, so there would be a window. But again, just because of time constraints, uh, I didn't really have time to cut out that many windows. 
And so I cut the grooves in there just to look like uh, this a vertical post with horizontal logs going into it. And I got, I based that off of this illustration here, if you can see, which is the Perrin homestead near Duck Lake. And that was from this document, Historic Building Technology of Métis Communities, uh, which is a study of Métis houses uh, by Parks Canada from 1985, I want to say. Um, so, yeah, this is actually a document that I got a lot of my information from. Uh, and I don't know, it's not that easy to find. Like, this was printed from microfiche from a library in Quebec City. But uh, if you're interested in reading more, uh, I would like to share a list of resources that, like things that I read and the documents that I got my information from and articles. I'll, I don't know that I'll have time to post that right away, but I'll try to make a Facebook post sometime in the near future with some links and at least like names of documents that you can look up if you're interested in reading more about that. So for the instruction videos for this, there will be four more videos. The first one will be preparing the parts to paint the insides of them before you assemble it. And that's an optional step. I'm going to have a, more to say about that in a minute. The second video is assembling the main part of the house, so just the walls and floors. And the third video is installing the doors and windows. And then the fourth video will be gluing on the roof. Um, so as for painting the inside before you assemble it, you can choose to do that or not. I prefer to paint the parts before gluing it together. It's easier to paint it that way, for sure, because if you wait until it's... I could put a raisin in there earlier. Um, if you paint it after, it's a little harder to, you know, get into corners maybe, or if you're using some kind of finish that you have to sand in between coats, it's easier to do that before the house is all assembled. The disadvantage to doing it that way is when you paint a piece of wood uh, or put any kind of finish on it, if you wet if you wet it, that can cause it to warp a little bit. But like, uh, let's tell tell you about the materials. The walls are made of Baltic birch plywood. These corners are a solid maple, and then the floors and roof are MDF. And the MDF especially, it can swell a bit when it's wet, or it can, it might bend a little bit. So that might make it a little bit harder when you're gluing the house together. Like when I put this together, I had to sort of, you know, bend the floor piece a little bit to stick it into the groove in the wall, and things like that. So that's a choice you can make. Um, it's up to you really like it, if you put it together after or if you put it together without painting it first it's totally possible to paint the inside after like it's not it's not that much of a problem but you know there are advantages and disadvantages to doing it either way so uh, yeah just take a minute to consider that and figure out what you think will be easier for you um, so I think that's all I need to say about that. Uh, so the next video will be preparing the house to paint the interior. So if you plan to finish the inside of your dollhouse, like to paint it or do some kind of wood finish or put wallpaper in or anything, it's easier to do that before you assemble it. So I'm just uh, going to show you how to prepare it for that. If you want to avoid putting paint or any other finish um, in the areas where the house will be glued together, because the glue might not stick to whatever paint you put on there. So what we're going to do is um, just assemble the house without any glue. So we're going to put in one side wall. Then the floors 
Second row, second side row, and the back. And you're going to take a pencil, use a sharp pencil or a pencil with a fine tip, like a mechanical pencil with a fine tip, and just trace on the front and back pieces uh, where those walls meet up with the side wall. Make sure the pieces are tight together when you're doing that. And then you're also going to trace around on the floor piece where the floor meets the corner of the wall. And you're going to do that same thing Same thing on the main floor of the house. So just put this up if you can see that. Trace around the top of the upper floor, like the ceiling, the lower floor. So now that that's done, we're going to set this part of the house aside. We're going to get the roof pieces. You'll notice the roof pieces have like an angled cut along one of the long sides. So you push those pieces right together, line up the edges. And we're going to tape them together with masking tape. We're going to put four pieces here. Gonna gently pick this up and make sure it stays together. Okay. And we're gonna bring the rest of the house back. Put the roof on top. Now you're gonna line up uh, the opening on the back roof here with this opening. Um, so the Opening on this back wall should be like just inside the, this opening on the roof. So you're going to line that up, roughly center it. You can just eyeball it, you don't have to measure anything. And then do the same thing. Turn it a bit this way. So you're going to trace a line where the, on the roof piece where it meets the top of this wall. And along the top of uh, this front wall here. So do that in all the corners. There, so now you have lines drawn on all your parts to mark where you're not going to put glue. take this apart. So when you're gluing it up, you also want to avoid putting glue inside, or I mean putting paint or anything inside these grooves. Um, because you are going to put glue in where the, where the floor is going to. And you're... Yeah, okay, anyway. Um, so you're going to take your masking tape. I mean, if you feel like you have a really steady hand and you can just like watch that line and make sure you don't paint outside it. Uh, you can go ahead and do that, but I mean, I don't trust myself that much. And also my, there's a good chance my toddler is going to help paint this, so I'm going to put tape on it. Um, I'm going to put tape along that line. I'm actually putting the tape a little bit outside that 
So it's like a little bit in the area that's going to be glued, but uh, not enough that it'll be a problem. Um, yeah, I'm just putting it a little bit outside, outside that line so that I don't end up with like an unpainted gap in the corner. So, I mean, you don't need to watch me tape up all these things. Um, I think you probably get the idea. So, if you want, you can just tape off all the areas where you're not going to put paint. Uh, another area where you're not going to put paint is the insides of these window and door holes. So, you can take your window and door pieces and you can like put them in there and see where they come into contact with the walls. Um, and just don't put, don't put paint on those parts. Like either on the inside of this hole or on the uh, inside of this door frame, door and window frames where they're going to be in contact with the wall. Because the window and door pieces, it's also going to be easier to finish them before you install them, especially the insides of them. So I just wanted to show you what I've done here. Um, I've taped up, I've taped off uh, these parts of the walls. Uh, I've just put a piece of tape here because the top of the lower floor wall is going to be the same color as the ceiling. So I've taped that off. I like, you know, measured this distance down from that groove, and then I'll match it up with the other walls too, uh, and then. I have this taped along the line that we made when we put the house together and drew lines. I'm going to erase the pencil lines uh, just because depending on, I don't know, they might not be covered by the paint completely. So I'll erase those. Hi, so we're now ready to assemble the dollhouse. Um, so I'm just going to tell you how to get everything ready for it first. Um, so I've laid out some paper here on my coffee table just to protect the surface of the table a bit. Uh, this is like melamine, so the glue probably won't stick to that anyway, and like it'll be easy enough to clean up, but just if you're concerned about uh, whatever surface you're working on, it's good to lay out some paper. You can use the paper that your dollhouse kit was wrapped in. Um, so I've laid that out. Um, now the bottle of glue that came with your kit, uh, I think you'll need to like poke a hole in the top of it to open it up. So go ahead and do that before you start. Um, and then just check to make sure the glue is coming out easy enough. Make sure the hole is big enough that you cut. Um, so then after you've done that, you'll need your tape. Uh, I'm using blue painter's tape. This is kind of the masking tape that I always use. Um, there are actually differences in quality of masking tape. Um, like sometimes if you have like a really cheap masking tape or a, a really old masking tape, like when you pull it off the roll, it'll rip into little pieces and it's hard to get a good piece of, out of it or uh, it'll rip like while you're trying to pull it over something. So, I mean, if you, I mean, check, just check to make sure your tape is good and working properly before we start. Uh, um, so how you have your tape, you'll need something to spread glue into the grooves of your house. Um, I usually use, you, like you could use a popsicle stick or any kind of like thin, st stiff enough object. Uh, I usually use like pieces of a business card or like a clothing tag, like some kind of thin cardboard and I just like cut little strips off it. And I've cut a bunch of strips here. I have a few ready to go. Um, you'll, I also recommend that you have like a damp cloth on hand, uh, just so if you get glue on your hands, it doesn't end up getting all over everything else. And if you get glue on your table, you can wipe it up. Uh, you should also have like a dry cloth somewhere, uh, just like a little dry cloth to dust off the pieces before we start, because if there's dust on the parts, the tape might not stick to it. Um, and then get your house parts. So we're gonna start with like the main part of the house. So the walls, we have our front wall and I'm gonna have that laid down in front of me here with uh, the inside up. 
Um, you have your side walls, two of those, your back piece, and the floors. So what we're going to do first is just a dry fit. So we're going to put the house together with no glue just to make sure everything fits together. So the, the thickness of this plywood is not totally consistent. So there are parts that are thicker than others and uh, some of them are a pretty tight fit. So we're going to just check the sides first and see that they go together easily. Um, this one's pretty tight. So like if there's like I before I packed up all the houses, I checked them all to make sure they fit together. So they should all fit together. But um, like say this side, there was like quite a bit of resistance getting it in there. So I'm just going to switch them around and see if it fits a little better the other way. So that one goes in. And yeah, so it fits a little better this way. So I'm going to make note of that and make sure I put... Uh, put these on the same side. This one's a little tight. If it is a little tight, you can just kind of push down on it and like gently wiggle it and uh, wiggle it into place. Um, when we're putting it together, the most important thing is that the grooves for the floors line up. Another thing that we're going to do while the house is put together here before, before it's glued up is uh, just tape off the inside corners. So. Um, when we're gluing it together, if we have a good amount of glue in there, it's normal for a bit of glue to squeeze out into the corners and then you have to clear it off. Um, and so it, it can be hard to clean it off, especially in inside corners. And so just to avoid needing to clean it off, we're going to just tape the inside corners. So you can tape the, uh, front and back walls with the house assembled like this. Uh, oh, another thing that is useful to have right now that I should have mentioned earlier is a utility knife. It's not necessary, like if you have masking tape, you can just um, rip the tape, but it's a little easier if you have a knife to cut it. You can just tape off these inside corners. in the top and bottom and be careful uh, that you're not blocking the floor grooves with tapes. Another way that you can deal with glue squeeze out is uh, while it's wet, you can use your damp cloth to just kind of wipe it off of the corners and like you know be careful not to spread it around to where it isn't where there isn't glue already um, but since I already have my house painted on the inside here like I don't know what that's going to do to it if I start wiping it with a damp cloth how that's going to affect the paint so I'd rather not do that so I'm just going to tape it off um, and you're going to have to deal with glue squeeze out on the outside of the house too probably a little bit so you can wipe it off with a cloth. Uh, it's a little easier to do that on the outside. Or another thing you can do is just wait for the glue to set a little bit, like when it's not dry any, when it's uh, when it's not wet anymore, but it's not hard yet. So it'll be kind of gelled. So if you touch it and it's like dry to the touch, but still like just a bit squishy. Then you can you can kind of pull it off, or you can take your knife and sort of like lift it off the surface. Um, and again, like the timing of that can be kind of tricky because it might be like twenty or thirty minutes, but it sort of depends on like the temperature and humidity of where you are and how thick the piece of glue is. Like if you do it too soon, you could end up just like spreading the glue around more. Um, and then if you wait too long till when it's hard, then you end up having to kind of chip the glue off and that can damage the surface a little bit. Um, so taping it off is an easy way to just avoid needing to do that. 
I'm not going to bother taping off like the grooves where the floors fit in because uh, the main joint that's going to hold the house together is these corners. So when we glue up the corners, we're going to put glue in there and we're going to kind of spread it to fill up like so that it's on the sides of the groove too and like a little bit on this space, like just a little bit on the edge here. Um, and that's the main thing that's going to hold the house together. Um, when we glue in the floors, we're just going to put in like a little thin line of glue and kind of just spread it into the bottom a little bit maybe. Um, so it's like a little a bit of extra stability, but it's not as much glue and so it shouldn't be a problem of like, there shouldn't be a lot of glue like squishing out of there. But if you are concerned about uh, that possibility, you can tape like along the, the floor grooves too. Um, so now I already have the, this, the side walls taped off. Um, and that's a bit easier, like you don't have to have the house together while you're doing that because the tape just goes right along this edge. And I did the top two for when we glue the, the roof on. Um, and you can do that on the back wall too. You do it the same way, you just, uh, you can put this back piece down, then uh, like put the side walls in and then tape it off in the corner there. The house is pretty much ready to be glued up now, but we're just going to check it again. Uh, we're just going to check the fit of it again. Um, like I think I mentioned in the intro that if you've finished your pieces before assembling the house, um, it can cause the pieces to warp a little bit, like especially the MDF. The MDF can kind of like swell and it might like curve a little bit like mine here this floor piece is like a little bit domed like that so but they they will like flex like you should still be able to fit it in but we'll just put it all in place just to see how it goes together completely before we put it together with glue so yeah so i just have to like bend this floor a little bit to make it fit in but yeah that goes in and the bottom piece. So we're just going to put the, all the walls and floors together to make sure everything fits right and, and just to get it set up, just to have a little practice run before we start putting glue in. So I'll have to like bend this a little bit to get into that groove too, but it goes in. This piece is all put together tight enough. This is a good way too to just test to make sure that we don't have any tape in the way of the floor grooves. Okay, yeah, so that all goes together fine. Now I'm going to take these pieces and set them aside. Now I'm going to keep this side on this side over here just to make sure I know which side goes on which side of the front wall. Um, before we glue it up, I'm going to get the, my tape pieces ready. So I'm going to put like, I don't know, three pieces of tape maybe on each corner. So I'm just going to rip off a bunch of pieces and kind of stick them to the edges of the table. It'll just be easier while, while we're gluing everything up. Um, don't want to get you too stressed out about it, but gloves are kind of stressful. They're like, they're just a little time sensitive. Like you don't want to, you want to make sure you have all your stuff ready to go and that you're uh, doing things right the first time. And um, like, you don't want to put glue into a, a groove here and then like, not be able to find something and so you're running around looking for it for a few minutes because um, like especially if something is a tight fit already to begin with um, like it might be hard to get it in if uh, if the glue is like started to gel a little bit so it's better to just have everything ready to go and make sure you have like a good you know undisturbed few minutes to get this done properly.
Okay, so I've ripped all, off all these cape pieces here, so they're ready to go. Uh, I have my glue here. I have my little spreader tools. These like little strips of business card. So now we can start gluing it up. So we're gonna glue in one side first, then the floors, then the other side, then the back. So we're gonna start by putting the glue into the one side groove. Now you've uh, checked your pieces to see which side goes in to which side. Uh, I would suggest if there was one side that was harder to get in, start with that side because it'll be even harder once you have like, once you have to line it up with the floors and everything. So this side was like a little bit uh, stiffer for me. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna put the glue in to this side. Now for the amount of glue, start with less. Here, I'll just lift this up for you. I've just put like a thin little line of glue in there. And then I'm gonna spread it around. So once it's spread, what I was told in cabinet making school is it should look it should look like the thickness of like spilled milk. Like you shouldn't have like a ton of glue like squishing out of there when it's all put together. Like it's normal, like I said, to have a little bit of squeeze out, but it shouldn't be like there shouldn't be like glue running out of there. So I can actually use a little more than what I had there. So just spread it into the bottom of the groove and onto the sides of the groove. And you could also let a little bit kind of get up just on top of the corners of the groove. Um, just because that's another part where the side walls will be in contact with this piece. And so it's just something to, it's just an, an extra glue surface. It'll be a little stronger if there's glue there too. So then I'm also going to put a little bit of glue uh, just in the first side wall here. Just a thin line of glue in this floor groove. Uh, I'm not going to be as uh, as thorough about spreading it around. I'm just going to spread it a little bit into uh, on the bottom of it, just so that it doesn't like drip down when I put the side in here. So I'm going to put this in and make sure make sure the floor grooves line up. It's best to watch and make sure that the grooves line up like before you have it all the way in because it can be hard to move it like once once it's in there. Oops, it's jiggling this. This was my stiff side, so like a little bit of resistance going in there. I'm just gonna like lean on it a bit to and jiggle it to make sure it goes in there, but like don't move it too much because you could like snap the side of that uh, wall piece off. So that's good. Then I'm going to just put a thin line in the grooves in the front wall here, too. pieces in. Oops. Okay. Be careful.
careful not to do that because I just ended up getting glue on the front wall here. It's okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. I'm just going to wipe this with my cloth here, Florin. Oh, I just noticed I forgot to put glue in the lower groove of the sidewall here. So I'll just do that. I'm going to, I'm actually going to do the floor grooves on this one first this time. So just a little thin line in the top one and in the bottom. And I'll just uh, bring this up closer to show you what I have there. Just a thin little line. Then I'm going to put the glue in this groove. I'll spread it around before I put the wall piece in. Okay, now I'm going to put the sidewall in. I find the easiest way to line up the sidewall is, uh, I don't know the best way to show you here, is I'll uh, put it like near the bottom and put the floor grooves in first. So to get the floor grooves lined up and adhere near the bottom like near the front wall here, and then kind of slide it down until you find the groove in the front wall. And then okay, I think that's in. Yeah. So again, just try to push kind of straight down on it, and you can jiggle it a little bit. I had to like bend this front wall to, or top floor to get it in the groove a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna set this aside here. And then you're gonna take your back piece and you're gonna put glue in these grooves. Well, I guess in all the grooves in the back piece. So the top and bottom grooves that the floors go into. Again, just a thin little line there. And then a little more glue in the in the sides. that's ready to go so you can get your house piece here and uh, take your back piece and sort of I usually up line it up on the bottom and get the both pieces into the grooves and then Okay. 
So yeah, I have a, some glue squeezing out here on the outside. Um, I'm just going to wipe that with my damp cloth here. I'm just going to lean on it a bit to make sure everything's tight together. I'm going to take my tape I'm, while leaning on it here, and I'm just going to pull it down tight and tape it to the side here. I mean, normally I would be doing this with the clamps. Like, ideally you would have clamps on this, but... Uh, I assume most people don't have like clamps wide enough to do that, so uh, we're just going to use tape for it. Same thing for the other side. Uh, put a piece of tape on there, and while leaning on it, just pull it down and tape it on. pick this up and uh, watch to make sure that there's no glue that dripped down that you're going to set your house down in and sort of flip it over so that it's on the back and same thing you can kind of uh, lean on it while pulling tape down on there When you're leaning on it, make sure you're pushing straight down and not like to the side or anything. Because that could break parts of the house. Just leave this like that. Um, actually, I'll just set it off right here. Now, the glue that came with your kit is uh, this here, JuraPro Carpenter's Glue. Um, so what it says on here is, let's see, clamp time 25 to 60 minutes and drying time 6 to 8 hours. So. You're going to want to leave this for about an hour before you uh, really move it around a lot or, um, or do any more work on it. And then, like, say if you have, like, a kid who's going to be playing with this, maybe don't let them play with it today. Uh, you know, wait until, like, tomorrow or something, or at least six to eight hours. Um, so now that this is all together, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is put on the roof. So the next thing we're going to do here, uh, actually before we put on the roof, is put in the windows and door. So for mine here, I painted the inside of the door and windows, but not the outside. I'm just going to paint the outside of it when I paint the outside of the rest of the house. So uh, first we'll just dry fit like before, like you do with the rest of the house. Check. Uh, that all the windows and doors fit. Some of these windows were like pretty different sizes um, and I did have to adjust like the size of the house hole, the, like the window holes in there for some of them. Uh, but I shipped them with the windows in there so you should have two windows that do fit. Um, but you can just check both of them, switch them around, see if it fits better in one 
side than the other and decide, these are about the same. So just decide which window is going in which hole and uh, set them aside there. So we're going to put the glue onto the window and door pieces. So the glue is going to go um, on this surface here and uh, the inside of this frame. So like these two surfaces here, like all the way around. So basically we're just gonna put the glue on those surfaces, stick them in here, and then we're gonna tape them with masking tape uh, to hold them to the wall. It's pretty straightforward. So I'll just get started on doing that. The door first. I'm just going to put some glue all the way around there. So I just put a line of glue all the way around there and then I'm going to spread it so that it uh, covers both surfaces. Again, the, the, the amount of glue you should put on should be about, uh, it should look like, you know, like spilled milk, sort of, like that thickness of, of glue on there. I've got glue around there, all around there on all sides. Looks like there might be a little bit too much here, so I'm just going to take some of it off. And I'm just going to put it in there like that. Make sure it's tight against the wall there. Okay, and then I'm going to open the door and take some tape and I'll just put a piece of tape around there like that to tape it against the wall. I'll do the windows pretty much the same way. Okay, so I've got that one glued. Um, I'm just gonna wipe my hands. I've got some glue on them here. So then I'm going to put the tape through that little opening. And wrap that around. Put a few pieces like that. I have a little bit of glue squeeze out there, so I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off with the corner of this cloth. A little bit on this side too. Glue squeeze out can be a bit of a problem, like because uh, if there's glue on there, um, whatever finishes you use might not be absorbed by the glue. So if you like put a stain on it after, uh, the stain might like the the stain might not absorb into the wood, or it probably won't absorb into the wood on areas where there is glue. So, it's best if you uh, remove it at some point. Okay. So, the frame of this is in contact with the wall all the way around, so that's enough tape. It just, you just need the tape to kind of hold it in place there until the glue sets. So I'll do the same on the other side here. OK, 
Okay, so those are all glued on. So just leave the tape on there for like, I don't know, an hour or something. Uh, half hour to an hour. Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, install the inside window and door frames. So you're going to have two shorter pieces like this that'll go on the top and bottom, and then you'll have these longer pieces that'll go on the sides. So what we're going to do is, uh, when you stick it on, I, I still have the backing on this, but we're going to stick it on like this, the, the vertical pieces first, and we're going to line up uh, this edge with this inside edge uh, of the window frame. So it's going to stick on like that. Um, you'll notice on your pieces uh, that the tape on the back is might be narrower than the actual piece. And if you feel this window frame, the window uh, is a little, the depth of it is a little bit less than the thickness of the wall. And so when you stick it on like this window, it, is not going to be in contact with this window frame piece. So when you stick it on, just make sure that this piece is kind of on the wall side. So the this taped part will be on top so that more of the tape is in contact with the wall. It'll stick better that way. So I'm just going to take the backing off my vertical pieces and I'm going to stick those on. So when you're when you're sticking it, uh, make sure you have it lined up well. Make sure it's like right where you want it before you actually stick it down. Because if you need to end up needing to move it, um, if you pull that tape up and then put it down again, it's not going to stick as well the second time. I mean, and it's not a huge deal if that happens. Like if you end up needing to put it down again, just try it, and if it seems like it's not sticking well, like if it's not going to stay there, then you could also just get some different double-sided tape and put new tape on it. Uh, and I'll do the other side here. So I'm going to do my best to make sure this piece is even with the other side. So I've got those pieces on. Um, so now I'm going to do the the top and bottom parts. So I'm going to take the backing off that. And I'm going to hold it like this so that I can see the edges of it. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of line it up so that it's centered on top of the vertical pieces. I think that's pretty good. That's a little bit off. Okay, that'll do. And I'm going to get, stick that down. And then I'll do the bottom. And line it up and stick it down. So, there you go. I think those look pretty good. And next we'll do the door. So the door pieces that we have are this piece here, this little narrow piece. This tape is going to go on the floor, so it's going to stick right here. Then you have your vertical pieces and your top piece. Um, now, uh, so I'm just going to stick this on first, and it's going to be centered on the door frame. Like try to center it like on this inner door frame, like as opposed to the hole that is cut in the wall, if those are a little bit different. So yeah, I'm just going to eyeball it and stick it down there. Take the backing off, line it up, and uh, just put it right against the wall. and. I think that looks good, so I'm going to stick that down. Now, if you'll see this piece, the top piece, I'm just going to line it up to the bottom piece here to show you that they're the same length. Um, so, 
when we put these together, like these corners are going to go together like that, and then the edges of this should line up with the with this piece on the floor here. So we're gonna when we stick the vertical parts on, you're just gonna line it up with the edge on the side here. You're just gonna line it up there, and then try to keep it parallel to to the door frame here. It's a little trickier than doing the window pieces, but I mean, again, it's double-sided tape. It's not getting glued on, so if you do end up having to move things around, even if you have to end up putting new tape on it, like you can, you can do that. So don't get too stressed out about it. So I'm just going to take the backing tape off here. And I'm going to stick this piece on. So I'm going to line up the bottom first, then kind of try to see that it's about parallel with the, the rest of the door frame. I think that looks good, so I'm going to stick that down. I'm not going to stick it too hard yet, just enough so it stays in case I end up needing to move it. I'll do the other side and then we'll do the top after. So I'll take that off. Again, line it up with uh, the edge of the piece that's on the floor. Try to keep it parallel. And I'm just going to stick it a little bit just so it stays there so I can check. I still have the backing paper on this tape. I'm just going to put it up there to see that these go together. And that's, uh, it's not perfect. I'm going to try to move this over a little bit. If the angle was not exactly where I wanted it. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit. And stick it a little bit down again, just enough so it stays there. And... That's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to stick that down a little more. And I'm going to put the top piece on. So we'll just try to place it so that the top corners meet up there. I think that's the most important thing, like the the angles on this aren't perfect, like there's like a tiny bit of a gap in the inner corner here, but I think like a little gap in the inner corner here is not as noticeable as like the gap up here. Like if the if the vertical pieces were like that, then that might make more of a gap in this corner. So I think this looks pretty good. That's not bad. I'm going to try to open the door a bit so I can squeeze this on a little better. and. Now that I have these placed where I want them, I'm going to press everything down a bit better. Now for the doorknobs, um, <laughs> I actually ran out of the, the type of doorknobs that I put in your kit. Um, I have a different kind that's uh, kind of hollow on the inside, so I'm going to have to put it on with uh, hot glue, I think. But the ones that I gave you, they're, um, it has a flat back. They're, they'll just stick on with super glue. So the standard height of a doorknob is uh, about, I think it's like between 34 and 48 inches or something. So it's like a pretty big range. Oh, I should mention the scale of this house is uh, 1 to 12, or it's also called 1 inch scale. So that means that 1 inch in here represents like 1 foot in real life. So, you know, anywhere between like three and four feet is pretty good for a doorknob height. So you could, you know, that would be from like about here to around the middle or something. So, I mean, you could just hold your doorknob up and see what looks right to you. Like, you know what a door looks like. You can pretty much guess where to put it, I think. Uh, just see what looks good. 
and you use the super glue according to the instructions on the bottle and uh, you can just stick it on like that. So to glue on the roof, um, basically it's going to be glued on by gluing it on here. We're going to put glue on here, on the gable, on top, on each side, and that's kind of the main part that will be glued. Uh, I'll show you when you do a dry fit, um, because like the, the way your house goes together, just because wood is a natural material and it might move and warp a little bit and you know it might not be glued together exactly square or whatever um, so depending on how your house went together this surface here the top of this back wall here it may or may not be in contact with uh, these roof pieces so when we will do a dry fit and you can check and uh, I mean if you put it on and like it is touching this part then you can put glue on there too but if it's not touching then there's no point in putting it there uh, so to prepare this before we before we glue the roof on we're just going to um, sort of mask this top edge just to keep the glue squeeze out off it like we did uh, for the other parts of the house. that's done. So I'm just going to set this part aside for a minute. And uh, a bit of glue here I want to wipe out. So now we're going to get our roof pieces. So these two pieces here, you'll see there's uh, an angled cut right there. So you're going to put those uh, We're going to put those corners together. So these are like the peak of the roof. So we're just going to put those corners together like that. Um, line up the edges. And you're going to take a few pieces of tape and tape them together. Brush off any dust that might be off on them. Uh, make sure the tape sticks. I'm just going to put three pieces of tape on for now. And I'm just going to pick it up to see that these, uh, see that it closes. And it doesn't, so I'm just going to adjust the tape, sort of loosen it off on one side or the other, and see if that makes a difference. So what we're looking for here, so that's what I, I want it to do. So when I pick it up, it kind of closes that corner tight together. So then I'm going to put it on top of the house like that. I'll just move it over here so you can see. So this opening in the roof uh, should be just a little bit inside of, or like outside of this opening. So you can kind of eyeball it and look and try to line them up. And then just check to see that uh, it, um, sits nicely on the tops of the, the gables here, like on top of these walls. Um, 
And like, if you find that it's like a little bit open like that, like it's kind of at a greater angle, you might wanna, you might need to like sort of hold it and like take the tape off and put it back down like that to, uh, to like let it close better on top of the, so it sits on top of the walls a little better. Um, mine is good, so I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, and I'm actually going to put a few more pieces to make sure it stays that way. So we're gonna be taking this off again and gluing it, obviously. Now, um, if you want to, you can, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to like mask off the inside. This is kind of hard. This is gonna be kind of tricky because you've got to get your hands right inside there. But I'm just gonna tape off kind of where the wall, uh, or where the roof piece comes into contact with the wall. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape along that corner just so the glue doesn't uh, make a mess on the roof piece. I'm gonna do this uh, along the top here because it looks like uh, mine sits pretty well on that top wall. It doesn't really on this side so much. But I'm gonna glue that top, the top of this back wall here, or front wall. I'm only going to do this on the front wall, like on the side of the roof that, uh, the side of the roof that doesn't have the opening here, because this part, like, you're never going to see this inside corner here, like, you'd have to, like, stick your head inside there, and, like, to, like, it would take a lot of effort to even see this front cor this back corner here, because, like, there are no windows or anything on this, on the side of the house, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what this front corner looks like here, unless you're gonna go to a lot of effort to look at it. Like, no one's ever gonna notice that there's some dried glue in there. So, uh, yeah, so now that's ready to go. So, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna do one more thing. Uh, because there's gonna be glue in this, uh, in like the peak of the roof, and that could drip down. So I'm actually gonna put uh, just a couple pieces of tape, like, to cover like the floor, like the center of the floor, and actually down the center of like the insides of these walls. So I'll just do it and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so what I've done here is taped the just a kind of a strip of tape. I have three pieces of tape here. That's probably more than I need, but uh, on the center of the wall, down the center of the floor, and uh, up the center of this wall. Um, glue in my hands. And that's just to catch any glue that might drip out of uh, this roof piece. Real quick, I should tape this off. along the edges of uh, where those two parts are going to meet. Okay. And I'll put the glue in there. Just a little thin line of glue. And I'll spread it in there. I'm just putting it along one side. So now I'll get back to gluing this up.
So you're just going to watch and make sure you're lining it up to where you taped inside there. And uh, yeah, okay, so that's on. So just kind of have a look at the sides here and make sure the roof is in contact with it. Um, then I'll turn it this way, okay. So this is kind of the part that's kind of messy. So you're gonna take your tape and you're just gonna have to play around with it a little bit. Just take a pretty big piece of tape and bring it along here and uh, just pull it down, push it down so that it's, you can see that the roof is in contact with uh, the top of this uh, gable here. And you're gonna just put a bunch of pieces to try to keep it held down there. going to like kind of push these pieces together and put a couple pieces across there so that'll kind of help hold it in a bit so this is what I meant when I said that the taping is kind of awkward for this uh, for this part so it's gonna be a lot of tape um, and it's okay, it just needs to hold the pieces in contact so the glue can set. So that looks pretty good. And do the same on the other side. So I'm also going to, because I glued the front here, I'm going to also uh, put a piece here and kind of glue it through the doorway. Just pull this down a bit more against that part. I'll put a couple pieces. I'm going to put one through this window too. Taping these sides, uh, mine don't really, mine don't really touch there, but I'll tape it anyway just to show you how you can do it. You can just take a like a pretty long piece and uh, oh, that's breaking. You can tape it along like this. I'll put this on here. Also take a piece and kind of tape it underneath here. So I'll just turn it around so you can see kind of what that looks like on all sides. Uh, it's not pretty, but if you can see that it's kind of 
holding the roof pieces in contact, uh, then just leave it for an hour and it should be good. Okay, so now you've finished your dollhouse. Uh, I hope it went well. I hope it was a fun project for you. And I hope I explained it well enough. Um, so now that it's all done, there's more that you can do to dress it up. Like you'll probably want to, you might want to finish the outside. I'm probably going to put some kind of stain on this. Before I do that, I might um, sand it a bit to make it rougher. Like I'll, I might use like a low grit sandpaper paper to make it rougher because I want kind of a more rustic look on the outside. Now I'll probably stain it and use like some kind of uh, oil finish on the outside too. Um, I'm probably also going to put shingles on it. Now the shingles that I used on the other dollhouse I made and what I'll put on this one is um, these little split cedar shakes shingles that glue on one by one. So you start at the bottom and you glue row after row of those. Um, and uh, they're put on with hot glue. They come in packs of 200, the ones that I get, and you, you would need two packs of those to do this. So, I mean, it's a lot to glue on. It takes a long time, but like, it's not difficult. For shingles, there are a lot of options for shingles. Like if you Google dollhouse shingles, a lot of things are gonna come up. You can get like shingles that come in more like a strip that you attach to it, or there are even like, I think, printed sheets that look like shingles that can just stick onto the roof. Um, so yeah, if you just do a search for it, you'll find a lot of options there. Um, now the scale of the dollhouse is 1 to 12, also called 1 inch scale. It's a very common scale of dollhouses and miniatures. And so basically it means that 1 inch of dollhouse represents 1 foot in real life. So if you want to buy accessories or anything, or build other things for it, if you want to buy furniture, curtains, or curtain rods, or anything like that, um, 1 to 12 or 1 inch scale is what you're looking for there. Um, another thing that you can do, what I might do, is you can get little, if you wanted to say put in um, like baseboards or things like that, just to kind of dress it up a little bit more on the inside. You can get these thin strips of wood, like I just cut these myself, but you could get these at, say, Michael's or any place that sells modeling materials, and you could get probably a couple feet of it for like a dollar or two. Uh, and then you could cut it to length and uh, stick those in there. In the other dollhouse that I made, I stuck them in with double-sided tape the same way that we did the uh, inside window and door frames. So. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, I hope you like how your dollhouse turned out.